incredible ability to create problems in the body. Again, fungus has been on the planet for millions and millions of years, all the way back to the uh, dinosaur age. And you see the yeast cells are just surviving and they're not being destroyed. So that, I mean, these, these are great pictures that really demonstrate um, every once in a while, this cell on the bottom, you'll see it kind of extend once in a while, these little, what are called uh, pseudopedia, which are like these false feet that kind of reach out and grab something to pull it in. Okay, that's good on that one. Uh, this is a very short, short video. Great. So once the yeast has converted to its fungal form, now you see the white blood cells having a very, very difficult time doing anything. There's, the yeast cells aren't really, are, aren't these free cells it's able to grab, and even the ones that it can try to grab that are attached to these long filamentous strands of fungus that you see in this picture are attached to the fungus. So it makes it, it can't really get around the entire cell. But um, you'll see how it's trying to do that, many, many of these white blood cells. Uh, and again, one of the things that we see in science is that when the white blood cell will wrap around the fungus cell, it'll induce this um, immune shift from a Th1 response, which is very, which is what you're seeing there, a Th1 response where the white blood cells try to get rid of the infectious agents to a Th2 where it later develops substances called antibodies to uh, try and attack these organisms. But um, the Th2 response really favors the growth of many organisms, uh, systemic fungal candida, E. coli, um, and many other organisms. Um, but they, they have learned through their evolutionary process and changes through their own genetics how to really adapt and to um, compensate for what the body is trying to do. And our next video. Uh, this is... Um, you know, if you go to YouTube and ever play this, this has a lot of music with it, nice classical music, but you're seeing uh, long filamentous strands of fungus, and I believe this is a, a slide of vaginal tissue. So the human cells are the, the big, bigger cells with the, the nucleus in the center, and you see these fungal strands just wrapping around and uh, layering between the cells, and even on the microscope, you'll kind of go between uh, layers because it's... When you look at this, it's 2D, but it's actually a 3D um, video. If you, if you go down through these, you'll see different layers of this. So we're looking at it in 2D, and you're seeing the strands. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to some uh, pictures. And again, all these are on uh, the Candida Library, so you'll be able to see these. And uh, we have some great pictures, which are going to uh, illustrate through high-power microscopy, uh, microscope fills, um, different pictures of candida as well as some animated pictures. Here you see the candida cell again. Here you see the yeast cell which has elongated into this fungal form. And right in the middle you'll see the one that's piercing through tissue. So it's piercing through epithelial tissue I believe. And this is how it escapes the digestive tract and enters into the bloodstream. And once in the bloodstream, the, blood, the pH of the bloodstream by the way is very pH neutral, uh, very conducive to candida growth. And candida, once it converts to the fungal form, has this amazing ability to go from fungal to yeast to fungal to yeast, depending on what's happening in the body. So if the body's trying to destroy it, it has an ability to change very rapidly to adapt and compensate to what our body does to try and get rid of it. Uh, the next slide, I'm not, let's see. Uh, nice, beautiful picture. This is candida stained. And again, you'll see the, the cells, and what we start to see in this picture is, is how it's not really this one-dimensional, but it becomes like this mass, like a mass of tumbleweed, and, and how it spreads in tissues. Candida is known to create abscesses in tissues and cause cystic changes, and, and part of all that is also the inflammation that goes along with it, the continued uh, ongoing pro-inflammatory uh, pro immune response, which then fatigues the immune system, so you eventually get immunosuppression just by long-standing uh, infections in the body, whether bacterial, fungal, viral, etc. Uh, this is a great uh, picture. It shows a white blood cell trying to wrap itself around a uh, filamentous or hyphal form, fungal form, a candida. You can see how the, the fungal form is very large. The white blood cell isn't, and um, 
And again, the, the candida has an amazing mechanism to withstand this type of assault and to manipulate the immune system um, at will to be more favorable to the spread of candida. Beautiful picture. <clears throat> Here are uh, two candida cells, and they're going through what's called a budding process. Um, so they'll go from uh, the yeast, they'll bud to form other yeast cells, or they'll uh, bud to form a pseudohyphal, which is going to be the transition state between the, the hyphal fungal form and the yeast form. Um, it's a nice picture that shows that taking place. Here again, you have another picture of a yeast cell and a white blood cell. Again, the white blood cell is much larger. Uh, it can um, consume uh, the yeast cell, but then the yeast cell has an amazing ability to uh, get rid, uh, uh, well, to manipulate the white blood cell, especially a macrophage. Uh, neutrophils tend to be the most effective white blood cells against candida, but they require the macrophage to send out the correct signals to the body so that the neutrophil can come along, leave the blood stream, and enter the tissue where the infection is taking place. Now, especially fungal forms of candida have an extreme ability to manipulate the immune system and also through mechanisms of secreting enzymes into the tissue around it or enzymes into the bloodstream to inhibit or destroy the ability of these immune cells to leave the bloodstream and enter the tissue where the infection is. This allows the infection to continue. Uh, this can be one of the mechanisms you'll see with uh, toenail infections are very difficult to get rid of, sometimes oral thrush. It's the ability of these cells to inhibit the correct immune response. Uh, more, more fungal cells in the hyphal form. You see these strands just uh, layered over, I believe, this is vaginal tissue. You see the cells very kind of skin-like, scale-like. Uh, these are human cells. Another, another great picture showing uh, a fungal form which is continuing to bud. And that's where you start to get these, as you will see, I think one of the last pictures, these kind of tumbleweed appearances where it's, it's budding off into all these different directions. Uh, uh, here's uh, another fungal form. You'll see multiple uh, little spores that are forming that are budding off the fungal stem cell or stem. More budding pictures, budding not in just one direction, but several directions. Uh, this is a great picture. If you notice at the top of the picture, you're going to see the, the fungal form of candida, all these little black uh, cells and these fungal strands evading tissue. This is, uh, I think, a, um, a slide that was taken of the esophagus. So this will be fungal esophagitis, uh, very common. Uh, fungal esophagitis is considered to be one of the markers for many AIDS patients. If you get uh, uh, fungal esophagitis, it's one of the things that they call an AIDS-defining uh, symptom. But you see how it's this massive amount of fungus invading the esophageal tissue. Another nice, pretty, colorful picture, candida. Another good slide. Um, this is of heart tissue. So you see these fungal cells invading the heart tissue. Again, all these strands branching off in different directions. Again, this 2D, it actually is happening 3D in, in multiple directions. And all, all of these fungal cells are going to be secreting enzymes, which are destroying the tissue around it, manipulating the immune response, uh, harvesting nutrients from the cells, around it. Um, uh, candida and, and most uh, all microorganisms need um, iron. So they're going to look to the tissues and cells to get that iron and they'll, they'll harvest it. The enzymes they secrete, um, the secreted aspartyl proteases, protein en enzymes, they destroy protein. Phospholipases, which uh, phos they destroy phospholipids. Phospholipids are in the cell membrane of most of our cells of the body. Um, they, they have an ability to destroy that, enter the cell. Lipases destroy fat cells. So they secrete all these enzymes, which enable them to enter tissue and spread this way. And they can do this asymptomatically. This can be going on in your body, and if I can find the research, I've got a lot of research papers in front of me, and I'm not as organized as I wish I was, but um, we, we looked at it this morning, and I came to a conclusion that I probably needed about two weeks to prepare for this presentation effectively. So I apologize for that, but I'll try to get the information to you. And it will be in our Candida library. This is all going to be organized in a very effective flow chart for people to follow and go to and refer to. This is a beautiful picture. This is, um, you can see uh, the fungal mass here. It's in multiple directions. It looks like a massive piece of tumbleweed. The scientific literature is going to show you that there are um, instances where doctors thought that they were seeing, um, that people had 
uh, tumors, cancer, when they opened them up, what they found were these fungal masses.